I drove through this apartment complex one day while doing some food delivery and on the way out I noticed this dresser that was sitting next to a dumpster with two couches sticking out of it. It had been raining most of the day and even though there was a lot of water on top it didn't look like it had been out here for very long. I checked the underside for any signs of bed bug or cockroach infestations. Other than a few old cobwebs it looks like it's fine. The legs are also pretty dry which indicates to me that it hasn't been out here that long. Thankfully, I was lazy the last time I used my moving blanket and didn't take it out of the back of the SUV, so I was able to quickly break down the seats, load it up, and take it home. Off camera, there was a few people watching me struggle to get this in the back of the Jeep. I don't know if they're the ones that threw it away, or maybe they were planning on grabbing it before I pulled up, but it's mine now. All right, I've got this chest in my paint booth now so that we can get a better look at it. From a distance, it looks like it's in perfect condition, but if you look a little closer, you can see where there's damage to the original finish, like here. The paint is coming off right here also on the details. And then down here, it's just flaking off. I don't think it was out in the rain very long, so I don't have to worry about any mildew or smells like that. And here is the back of the piece. This is not an antique, not a vintage piece. It's from Rooms To Go. This isn't anything special. It's not solid wood. You can see this is pressed board on the side. But other than that, this piece is really sturdy. I'm also going to do something a little bit different for this video. I have this phone set up here with a timer ready to go. I have a lot of people ask me how long it takes for me to do projects and I'm going to use this to be able to track it. And I'm only going to track labor time. So when I'm working on the project, the timer will be running. And whenever I'm not working on the project, the timer will be stopped. So whenever paint is drying and things like that, we're not actually spending labor on the project. So we're not going to calculate that time. In a real life scenario, whenever I stop working on a project because I'm waiting on it to dry, I'll be working on something else. So it makes more sense to track things with labor time rather than the full amount of time. Even though it may take a few days to get a project done, the amount of time you actually spent on it is how you're going to track your hours. I'm going to get this thing up on some paint cans, then I'll remove the hardware, remove the drawers, and we'll get this thing cleaned up and ready for paint. Let's get the timer started. Alright, there's all the hard <clears throat> there's all the hardware. Took about nine minutes or so. Didn't have my drill. I don't know where it is, but so I use this instead. Got the job done. Next thing I need to do is clean this all out. Get all those gross socks out of there. I also need to get under there and vacuum so we don't have a bunch of spiders invading the house. Just so happens the sponsor of today's video is a bubble power station for just this exact reason. Total coincidence. This is the Alpha ESS Black B1000 personal power station. It's a 1000 watt hour power supply that offers the ability to power up to 12 different devices from phones to fridges at a moment's notice. But rather than just telling you what it can do, let's see how this power station helped me during this power outage scenario. There'll be a link down in the description of this video along with a discount for those who are interested in purchasing this useful tool. Let's get back to the project. It has a light, and then I should be able to run an extension cord to one of these here so that I can power my lights and we can continue working. Okay, I've got my extension cable with my four overhead lights plugged into it. I'm gonna plug it into one of these 110 volt AC plugs here. Haha! <laughs> it works! I don't need this flashlight anymore. And we can turn this off. So my overhead lights are drawing about 100 watts. So I think if I'm doing the math right, I have like 10 hours of light left. 
Okay, I think we're back in business. Let's get the timer going and continue working. Pretty sure this vacuum is gonna draw a lot of power, but we don't need it for very long, so I'm gonna knock this out. 800 watts. All right, I'm done with the vacuum for now. I'll go ahead and unplug that. We still got 98% power. I don't think I'll need to recharge it doing this project, but if I needed to, it comes with the AC power input. You can also charge it with your car, solar panels and all that, but I don't think we're gonna need all that for this project. All right, time to move on to the next step. We're at 16 and a half minutes. Before I do anything else to this piece, it needs to be cleaned up and I'm going to use some trisodium phosphate mixed with a little bit of water, about a tablespoon or so, give it a good stir, add a little bit of bread, This cleaning step is really important because you want to make sure that you get all of the dirt and grime off of the surface of the furniture before you paint it. Those things can interfere with how well your paint bonds to the surface. So cleaning is pretty much the number one thing that you want to pay attention to before you go to paint a piece of furniture. All right, I got it wiped down. Toasty's job is done. Next, I'm gonna use a rag to give it another wipe down. This just ensures that I don't have any leftover residue from the TSP wipe down. Sometimes the TSP loosens up stuff and leaves a little bit behind, and it's always a good idea to give it a second wipe down to make sure that you're not leaving any of that grime behind before you paint it. Here's all the stuff that was left over on the dresser from the final wipe down. We've got about 30 minutes of time invested so far. Still got 94% left over on my power station here. We're gonna plug some sanders into it and see what happens. I'm gonna be using my Surf Prep 3x4 sander to do this job. And I'm not going to sand everything all the way down. I'm just gonna scuff it up a little bit. This factory finish right here that's already on here can be painted over. It just needs to be roughed up and areas like this need to be smoothed out things like this damage here. That way, whenever I come to paint over it, that won't be noticeable. So I've got the sander hooked up to my little shop back here. Those need to be plugged in, of course. So I'll be able to use these other two AC outlets here to get power to those. Don't let me forget to start this. Here is the plug for the surf prep sander. Let's plug in the vacuum. Turn it on. I am going to sand these areas down to the wood here, but only because it's necessary to feather these areas out where the paint is chipping off. This spongy pad will help me sand those detailed areas, but keep me from sanding too much. All of these areas where the paint was chipping is feathered and smoothed out now. We can stop this. 
When I was sanding the top and trying to feather this out, I saw that there's some wood grain under here. So I think I'm just going to try and strip the top and see what's under there. To strip the top, I'm going to try using this carbide scraper. I've only used it once before, so I'm kind of excited to try it out. Let's start the timer. I got a damp rag so I can see what's under here because it doesn't really look like wood. It looks like it's pressed wood or some sort of manufactured core, but it's definitely not real wood. I'm going to continue stripping the rest of the top and see what I can do. I'll be honest with you, that's a lot of work. It comes off of the side really easily, but on top of this veneer it doesn't. And I'm afraid I'm going to end up scratching the wood. So I think for this project it doesn't make sense to use this. I'm going to use some good old fashioned wet stripper. For the stripper I'm going to use this clean strip quick strip in the 15 minute formula. Fifteen minute formula is meant to strip varnishes and finishes, but if you use it on paint, it's usually good to go in about five minutes. Whenever I'm working with stripper, I like to use a liberal amount, keep it nice and wet. You don't want the stripper to dry up on you. Get a little bit on the edge here. You can see the stripper is already getting to work. It's only been a few seconds since I applied it. I'll leave this for about five or ten minutes and then come back to check on it and see if it's ready to be stripped off. Uh, let's see what it's looking like. Yeah, that's ready to come off. The stripper made some great progress. You can see my wood showing now. These areas here where there's still paint is just where I didn't get enough stripper, especially on the back. And then all the paint that's kind of in the wood grain, that was going to need a second application of stripper anyhow. So I'll go ahead and do that and wait another 10 minutes and scrape it off a second time. I didn't attempt to scrape this edge here the first time because I didn't get enough stripper on it. So we'll let this second coat sit for a little bit and I'll scrape it on the second pass. I'm going to use the big scraper this time just to get more done faster. The next thing I'm going to do is use some mineral spirits and coarse steel wool to scrub off the stripper residue and leftover paint from my wood. This ensures that I get all of the stripper residue and leftover paint out of the wood grain before I stain it. I will need to let it dry for a few hours before I can sand it and stain it. Oh, I forgot to start the timer. That's okay, I left it running earlier whenever the shipper was settling. Next, I've got some clean rags. We're going to wipe up all these mineral spirits. I'm 
I'm about an hour and 40 minutes into the project and that's the top fully stripped down. All these little white streaks here that didn't come out in the stripping process, we'll get that with sandpaper a little bit later. After a few hours, the top is ready to be sanded. I'm gonna use the Surf Prep 5 inch sander and a thin foam pad so that I can get around the edge easily without over sanding. Now that I've got everything prepped and sanded, I'm going to use a rag and a brush to get all the dust off. Then I'll come back with a damp rag that I've wrung out really well and wipe up any dust that I may have missed. Here's the dust that the damp rag collected, so very important to get all the dust up before you continue on. Now I'm going to tape the top off so I can protect my wood from the paint step that I'm going to do next. To paint this piece, I'm going to use this Wagner Home Decor paint sprayer. This is a really inexpensive paint sprayer, but the last time I used it was two years ago in another video of mine. But I just cleaned it out before this video and put water in it, sprayed it to make sure it would work. It looks like it's still going to work, so I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to be painting this piece with this Sherwin-Williams Infinity in this red here. Here's the color information for anyone that needs it. The color is called Salute. The stuff looks pretty thick, so I'm definitely going to have to thin it out to be able to get it to come out of that sprayer. This sprayer doesn't have enough power to get this thick paint out without it splattering, so thinning it allows you to get a much smoother finish. So I'm going to pour about 15 ounces of paint in here. Then to start off, we'll just add about an ounce or two of water. Screw the cup onto the gun. Hook the hose into the gun. Move this power station out of the way so that I can paint. Let's plug this in and give it a test. Anytime I use this sprayer, I make sure to test out the spray first before I start spraying the furniture. The reason is that while this sprayer is pretty inexpensive, it's also pretty weak. So if I don't have the paint thin correctly and the air pressure settings adjusted correctly on the paint gun, either not enough paint will come out or too much paint will come out and make a splattery mess. I usually end up adjusting the air settings on the sprayer and then the spray usually gets to a point to where it's coming out pretty good but a little too splattery, meaning it's too thick. I'll add a little bit more water and then do a few more test sprays to see if it's where I need it. This takes a little bit of extra time, but it's well worth it to make sure that your paint comes out nice and smooth to give you the best finish as possible.
guess it's red. All right, it's been about an hour. The paint is dry enough for the second coat to be applied. I just want to show you some of this up close so you can get an idea of how this paint's coming out. You can see how it's speckly and splattery or whatever. The more coats that I come in and do lightly, the more this gets covered until it eventually looks smooth like this. I went a little heavy on the front, but it's okay. I didn't get any runs or drips. And over here, I went a little too light, but we'll get another coat on and get all that filled in. Alright, there's the second coat. See the coverage is a lot better. I'll leave this here another hour or so and we can get the last coat of paint down. Another cool feature about this power station is the dual wireless charging on the top here. You can see where I've been setting my phone here to keep it charged while I'm waiting on the paint to dry. And it isn't on all the time, you need to do a little double click here. This blue light here lets you know that it's on. Then it's as simple as dropping your phone on there. Don't laugh at my cracked screen. While I'm at it, some people ask me what I use to record my videos. This is a Samsung Galaxy S8. Cracked screen and all. I'm really enjoying all the power options. I'm even using it right now with this cable to charge the GoPro that I'm filming with right now. So far, I'm very pleased with the Alpha ESS power station. I have some camping and fishing trips planned for the spring and summer, and I can't wait to take this thing with me. All right, fully charged. Let's get back to work. Some of y'all may be curious about what happens to the drawers and it depends on the dresser. With this one I can stagger the drawers a little bit and spray and you can see that I pretty much get a perfect line. This one I'll have to touch up a little bit. Sometimes a little bit of paint gets on the side of the drawers like you can see here but you can just sand that off quickly or you could tape the side of these drawers off but I prefer to do it like this. I'm a little lazy. As far as the inside of the drawers go, when the drawer is staggered like this, you only have this small crack for paint to get into, so if you get your angle correct, you can spray along the top of the drawer without getting any paint inside the drawer. For now, I'm just going to get a paintbrush and touch up these areas where the paint didn't get full coverage. I'll also need to take out these drawers so that I can get in and paint these areas here and the top lip of the inside of the drawer here so we don't have white showing right here. All right, I'm done with the painting step. Everything is dry, good to go. Next thing I'm gonna do is stain the top. I'm going to be using this Minwax oil-based wood stain. The color is ebony. This stuff is really liquidy. I like to give it a, a nice stir. A lot of the stuff will be on the bottom, like you can see there. Just give this a good stir for a little bit. I'm not very confident that this is going to come out perfect on the first try because this wood on the top here is really light and then whatever the heck this is on the side here is real dark and I don't know how well it's going to take the wood stain compared to the top. So we'll play it by ear and see what happens. Give it another stir off camera just to be sure. Yeah. So you see the difference here in how dark this is and how this kind of looks brown. 
this is the difference in me stirring it and not stirring it well. So you always want to make sure that you stir your wood stain really well before you apply it. So if you had this happen to you, you want to fix it right away by mixing your stain more thoroughly and reapplying it immediately. That way everything is even. All right, we'll let this sit for about 10 or 15 minutes and then I'll wipe it off. Let's see what we're working with here. Just doing almost nothing to the edges. Eh, actually, it stained it a little bit, but it's uneven. That's okay, I have plans. This isn't as dark as I was wanting it, so I'm going to apply another coat. The instructions say to wait four hours before reapplying, but I've never had any problem just applying right after. I also mixed this up really good this time, so maybe we'll get a little bit more progress. All right, we'll let this sit for another 15 minutes and I'll come back and wipe it off. Just a little tip, if you're ever wiping off stain like this and you're having trouble getting stuff off, it's usually because your rag is oversaturated, like this is even so wet, it'll leave stain behind. So it's time to get rid of this and get a new rag. So it's a little darker, but it's not as dark as I was envisioning in my mind. So I think I'm going to give it one more go with the stain and that'll probably do it. Okay, I'm a lot happier with this. I don't know how well it shows up on camera, but this is looking good to me. These edges don't look that great. I mean, to be honest, from back here, it doesn't look that bad. But up close, it's, it's kind of funky. But I'm not going to dwell on it. I have a solution. Let's just move on to the next step. Let's do a little status update on the power station here. Looks like we got 23% battery left. I'm not going to be using any other power tools to complete this project, so all I need is enough juice to keep the lights going until we get this thing done and we'll be out of the woods. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is use the same wood stain that I used on the top. And what that's gonna do is tone down the boldness of this red color. And it's also going to highlight these details. Again, I'll brush it on and wipe it off immediately. The reason I work in sections is because the wood stain likes to dry up within like 10 or 15 minutes, especially if it's hotter. So I found it's best to just do one side, do the other side, do the front without the drawers in, and then take out the drawers and do them separately. If the stain dries up too much, it gets real sticky, like tacky, and it's very difficult to wipe off. All right, that looks good. Now I'm gonna wipe it off right now. What I like to do when I'm using this technique is clean rag, fold it like this, and then just like the top, whenever I wipe it off, it's gonna get oversaturated. So you'll see me constantly unfolding the rag to find a cleaner part of the rag, and then eventually I'll replace the whole rag and get a new one if I have to. Just gonna wipe the majority off. You can see where I rubbed right here and down there and right here. We still need to get this off. Just make another pass back and forth like this to do that. It's almost kind of like a, 
like you're blending it. can't remember to turn that timer on and save my life. If you ever do this you need to pay attention to these overlapping areas right here so obviously I'd already wiped this side and then I did this side and whenever I brushed it it came over here so you just always want to double check and wipe those up immediately before it dries and blend it in with the rest of your finish the drawers are the trickiest part of the glazing process because you have to make sure that you get them to match the same tone as the dresser when I'm wiping this off I'm not rubbing real hard I'm just kind of lightly rubbing it so however hard I rubbed on this area, I have to make sure that I repeat that here so that everything matches. What I tend to do is do the majority of the wiping right here, and then I'll place the drawer inside the dresser and match it to these areas right here with a second wipe down. So now I just want to clean up these little areas right here, it's dark here. Before I do the top drawer, I just kind of wanted to put it in there so we can see the difference of what the original color looks like versus the glazing. Another thing that helps me get everything even is taking a step back every once in a while to make sure that everything is matching, taking note of any areas I need to correct, and then blend it where needed so that it all matches. Well, that's a waste of about $12. Well, the glazing is done. <laughs> For the top coat, I'm gonna use this Minwax Aerosol Lacquer and a semi-gloss sheen. It says it's fast drying, 30 minutes to recoat, but in my experience, as long as the weather's nice and I'm using really light coats, I can get away with 15 minute recoats. Let's go ahead and get the timer started.
Okay, here's the first coat. I'm not going to be able to see much of a difference just yet, but after a few more coats, it's going to look really shiny. Okay, this is going to be coat number two. Okay, I've got four coats of lacquer down and I didn't record all of it because it's pretty redundant. It's the same thing over and over, light coats on each side. But at this point, I do something a little different. Because I've been spraying the lacquer in really thin coats, the surface is really rough. So what I'm going to do is use this 320 grit sanding sponge to knock down all of those rough areas, wipe everything off, and then give everything a final coat. This is mostly only necessary for the top, but sometimes the sides get a little rough too. I found some rough areas on the sides and on the front of the drawers. So I'm going to give all the large flat areas a quick pass with this 320 grit sanding sponge. I'm just going to sand lightly to knock everything down, wipe it off, and then I can apply another coat. It. And when you do this, you'll get this little white dust on the surface. You want to make sure that you wipe this off before you apply your next coat. Again, this is the white dust that I was telling you about when you sand it. You don't need to panic when you see this. It'll wipe off. To wipe it off, I'm going to use this tack cloth little sticky cloth that'll get all the dust off easily. At this point, I'm pretty happy with how things are coming along. I uh, like the top and everything. The main issue I have with the top is the side here, this manufactured piece. It has this seam that's running along here. And even though the staining is uneven here, it kind of looks cool. But again, this seam right here is what's really bugging me. So I think what I'm going to do is cover it up with some gold. And we'll also add gold to the details and stuff here and the drawers when we put them in later. The gold I'm going to use is this Rub and Buff Antique Gold. I've had a lot of people recommend this to me before since I use gold gilding a lot, so I'm looking forward to giving it a try on this project. To apply it, I'm going to use a toasty sponge and just squirt out a little on here and rub it around a little bit. Then I can just rub this along the edges to apply the gold however I see fit. A little bit more. I'll go ahead and get a little bit on this edge too. Just kind of highlight these edges with the gold, cover up my mistakes.
going to delete this mistake here with some mineral spirits. Just need to clean up some of my boo-boos here. There we go. And there was another one. There it is. There we go. Now I've got the hardware laid out here ready to be painted and the reason I'm going to be repainting it is because the new gold that I've added doesn't match this gold of these handles here. This is a lighter color. This original hardware also has the white in the details that would make more sense for it to be black for me. So I'm going to be painting this hardware black and then using the same gold that I used on the details here on the details of the hardware so that it all ties in together. To paint the hardware I'm going to use this Rust-Oleum black spray paint. And this is what we're left with after everything has been painted. And now that everything is dry, I can start applying the gold in the same way that I did with the rest of the dresser. I'm going to be using a toasty sponge with this rub and buff. Just give them a little squirt right there. before I put these on they need to be buffed so after you put this wax on you let it dry for like 15 minutes and then come back with a rag or you could use a sponge too and just lightly rub it and buff it this will make it nice and durable and get off any excess I know a lot of people are going to ask well is it going to come off whenever people use the handle and short answer is no the long answer is yes over time but we're talking like a very long time. Before I started this project I put some of this on my desk in an area where I put my hand a lot and it hasn't worn off yet so I'm fairly confident it'll be durable enough that I don't need to top coat over it. Okay, that is it. I am finally done with this piece. I can stop the timer coincidentally on 420. <laughs> so let's do the math real quick. I plan on selling this piece for around $400, but if we deduct about $100 for supplies, which is probably closer to $80 without the stain spill, I'm looking at about $300 profit. Divide that by four hours and 20 minutes, and it looks like I'm doing about $69 an hour. Nice. And disclaimer, this is just an estimate. It doesn't include things like gas, lights, driving to pick up the furniture, driving home with the furniture, and all that. Four and a half hours isn't that bad for a project like this, considering all the different techniques I used. Now, if I wasn't recording a video for it, I could probably get it done in about three and a half hours. I know this video is a lot longer than most, but I wanted to do something a bit different by answering some common questions as well as providing some tips while I'm working on the project. And that just took a little bit more time. Let me know in the comments what you think about this project. If you haven't already subscribed, now's the time to do it. While you're at it, share this video with anyone you think that might like it. 
Thank you to Alpha ESS for sponsoring this video and thank you all for watching. I'll see you all again soon.